Hi everyone, welcome to the Knitting Turnpike. Welcome to the Dating Term Pike. My name is Gina Pike. I'm so happy that you're here today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a what are you knitting crocheting video. Hey everyone, before we get into the uh, what are you knitting part of this video, um, I must uh, take a few moments. Um, I did record this video um, earlier last week and just haven't had the time to edit it and get it ready to post. Um, but uh, I uh, made a big mistake and I must apologize to all of you guys um, uh, today there was um, today is Saturday the 5th of February and um, I uh, some of you guys showed up to a show of mine which was supposed to be a live show um, and uh, I did not realize I had scheduled it for today I scheduled it on my calendar for um, on my calendar, it says the 12th. I have it marked for the 12th of February, not the 5th. And I guess I made a scheduling mistake, and I apologize profusely. I am so sorry for those of you who guys who showed up. Um, I was not aware that I had done that, so I thought it was going to be this next Saturday on the 12th. So um, please forgive me. I hope I did not waste too much of your time. I am so sorry. I just made a mistake. Um, this has been a weird week for us because we've had a lot of really um, cold weather, some power outages here and there. And uh, um, anyway, I do apologize profusely and uh, for my error. And uh, I have a calendar, and I'm hoping that I can stay better on track with things and uh, I'll have to double check myself against it I guess a little bit better and make sure that um, I don't do that again so please forgive me I hope you enjoy the rest of this while and it's been uh, I've took a little bit of a break after December and um, it's been a while since I've done a video so it's nice to see you all here with me today um, and thank you for letting me take that break. Uh, today, I'm going to be bringing up to speed a little bit on a few things that I've started for 2022. Um, there's one thing that I worked on over the break that's right here behind me. It is a test knit, and I really can't talk a lot about it, but it is a nice jacket that I made. And I'm excited to talk about that um, a little bit um, closer to February. I'll be able to share a few more details on that um, right now, it's still in test. Um, I just finished mine a little early. And um, anyway, I want to talk a little bit about some other projects I've started for 2022. Um, and if you guys are interested in knitting these along with me, that would be lovely. I would love to, to have you do that uh, with me. Um, these are all knitting projects. I hope to be doing some crochet stuff. I've got some things planned, and I'll be sharing that as soon as I possibly can. But uh, the first project that I want to share with you are two uh, two year long projects. You know, last year I knitted some projects that uh, went all year long, and uh, I've got I've actually have three projects this year that I'm I'm thinking about doing. I've started two of them. I'm going to share them here today. The third one I'm still kind of on the fence about, but I want to mention it in case some of you guys might be interested in making this. The first year long project that I'm going to talk about is called the 2022 Year of Delicate Lace. The pattern is by Elizabeth Ravenwood. This is a project where every month you're going to get some clues and each clue is going to be different, um, a different lace pattern. Okay, so she is starting this project, the 2022 Year of Delicate Lace. Um, last year, it was the 2021 year of international lace. And remember, we traveled to different countries and we did lace from different countries. Well, this year is delicate lace. And it, she is starting this very similarly to last year's project. Do you remember we did we did two ends and we kept going back and forth between the two um, pieces. And then we met in the middle and we grafted them together towards the end of the year. Well, we're doing the same thing this year. Uh, this is my project. Um, 
that I've started. This is January and December's clues. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the yarn first and then I'll um, show you the project. Uh, the yarn I'm using is a Badland Tosh Mo Light yarn. Badland Tosh Mo Light. And this is an 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Kid Mohair yarn. You can see there is a look, you can see the Kid Mohair Halo um, on the edge of it. Can you see some of the fuzzies on this? Um, so it's got 20%, makes it really soft and fuzzy and kind of nice to knit with. Um, and this color is called Wade. It's a light ice blue. And I have two skeins, which is kind of nice because um, this project is starting out just like last year's, where you have two ends. One is January, one is February, and these are what these are looking like. I will get up close, but as you can see, they, they, they look the same. I knitted the same clue twice. Um, and what you had to do for this clue to get started was... Um, I'm, I'm using a dark blue um, Irish rainbow blue bead, seed bead, six slash zero seed bead. Um, probably could have used an eight slash zero seed bead. Um, what you had to do is you started down here and you knitted this edging like this. You knitted it like this and you knitted, um, I think, one, two, three, four, five, seven of these. That's right. Seven sections. When you got to the when you got to the end here, you turned it and you picked up the stitches along this edge, and then you knitted all of this going up. And now there there are some feather and fan sections in here. There are some easier lace sections, um, and then of course the beaded part. And then you can see here um, there is a stitch here. Um, which is like a, a knit yarn over knit stitch with where you beaded it um, and just really simple easy knitting this is a a charted pattern um, very simple chart very simple stitches um, of course you can see the beading on the um, edging and that's this project and there's again there's so every month there's going to be an update for this there'll be um, next month there'll just be one clue for one edge and then the next month we'll go to the other edge and you know go back and forth and that's the year of delicate lace and like I said this is Elizabeth Ravenwood um, it's going to be approximately 80 inches long by nine and a half inches wide. Um, this uses about 800 uh, yards of lace weight yarn. Um, I'm using it's, I'm using a, a light fingering weight yarn, and um, you need about 800 size six slash zero or eight slash zero seed beads. You also need a cable needle. Now the stitches that we've done so far in this first section were uh, knit and purl. Um, you have to slip a one with a working yarn in front, yarn over, slip, knit two, pass the slip stitch over, uh, knit two together, slip two stitches, knit, pass the two slip stitches over. Um, and that's really about it for this month. There was one stitch that was like a knit yarn over knit um, and then on the wrong side we had to purl the three stitches but the middle stitch you put a bead on and that was um, that was this part right here which made this really pretty design here with the bead on top and that's the 2022 year of delicate lace starting out Alright, the next year-long project that I want to talk about is um, something I haven't started yet, but it is also by Elizabeth Ravenwood, and this is called the 2022 Cables and Lace MCAL. And now this is a shawl. This is a Cables and Lace shawl project designed by Elizabeth Ravenwood. Um, I think it's going to be a rectangular-looking shawl, another stole, and... Um, there are two ways you can actually do this. I'm still considering if I am going to do this. You can do this in two color ways. Um, I'm sorry, in two colors. 
or you can do a one color shawl. If you want to do a one color shawl, you need 1200 yards of a lace weight yarn, or if you're going to do two colors, you need about 700 yards of the main color and 600 yards of the contrasting color. You can also do this in fingering weight as well. Um, you need about 500 size 6 slash 0 or 8 slash 0 seed beads. And again, this is going to be similar to what I just showed you, except that you're going to get a clue, I think, every other month. So every two months, you'll get a clue. So there should be six clues for this shawl. And at the end, you'll have a shawl. Um, I picked out two yarns to do this with, two colors. I just haven't started it, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to knit it yet, but I have. But I have picked out some yarn and some beads. This is a Tessa. This is a die for yarn Tessa lace yarn. I think I just showed this recently because it's a pretty new acquisition. This is 706 yards. This is called Withering Bunch of Roses, and this is a lace Tessa silk, and this is called Mashed Blackberry. I think they look really nice together. They'll have nice contrast if I do end up using this. And if I do that, if I do pick these, these are the beads I kind of decided on using. Um, these are Miyaki seed bead. Um, these are six slash zero amethyst gold luster seed beads. That's kind of what I'm thinking about doing. If I do that. But I haven't decided completely yet. Kind of have stalled on starting it and I'm working on something else. So I might come back to it. I might not. But I wanted to mention it in case you guys are looking for um, an interesting, another interesting year-long project that you might want to work on. Um, again, I might work on it, but I might not. So, um, but Elizabeth Ravenwood makes beautiful patterns. You guys have seen her patterns from last year and the previous year. And then, of course, this delicate lace and then the international lace scarf. So I know this is going to be really nice. I just um, am trying to figure out, excuse me, if I have the time to do this or not. The next year-long project that I'm that I've started. Um, this is called the 2022 Shetland Lace Sampler Wrap, and this pattern is by Tony L. Lorenz. And now she did a year-long project that I did last year, and that was the um, Japanese Sampler Scarf. Tony L. Lorenz did the. Remember, we got a clue every month, and we that was the Japanese Sampler Scarf. Well, this year her focus is. Shetland Lace Sampler Wrap. And if you want to knit this, you need about 850 yards of lace weight yarn or in a size 4 needle or 950 yards of a fingering weight. So you can use lace or fingering weight yarns and then a US 6 needle for the fingering weight. You need about 368 beads, either 8 slash 0 for the lace or 6 slash 0 with the fingering weight. And uh, this is finished size is about 15 inches by 62 inches lace weight. Um, and there are opportunities within the pattern to lengthen it. So you can make it longer if that's something that appeals to you. Now this is a charted pattern as well. And there are all kinds of stitch definitions uh, for this um, for this uh, shawl. So far we've done a knit pearl, knit two together, a slip slip knit, a slip 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 knit, a centered de double decrease, and a slip on with a working yarn in front. So there's nothing, oh, and purl two together, purl three together. There's nothing really complicated so far. This was done actually, what I thought was interesting is like these two different designers came up with the same thing at the same time, but we started with the edging. We did it. This is what I'm doing so far. Let me show you the yarn. The yarn I'm using is Manis del Uruguay Fino Yarn. It's kind of what I used for my Japanese sampler scarf last year. This is what it looks like. This is the color. This is Corsage. It is 401 Corsage. It's a 70% merino wool, 30% silk. And you can see the color here. It's like a light purpley pink. And 
Let me show you this looking close up. This is what it looks like. And then I'm using the same beads I just showed you for that other shawl. These um, golden amethyst luster beads. I think they look really nice. You'll see them with the yarn here in a second. Um, this yarn is really soft and has amazing stitch definition. But um, January's Clue, this is, this is January's Clue right here. And this is called Cat's Paw Lace Edge with Cat Paws Insert. And I'll try to put a, you can see what it looks like all pinned out. I mean, I don't have it pinned out, sorry. But you can see what it looks like if I pull it out. It's so beautiful. And what you did was you started this way and you did this, this lace edging this way. This was almost, all of this was the whole lace edging. You knitted this six or seven times. Let's see, one, two, three four, five, six, wait, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six times, you can see each one of these little cat's paws was one of them, you can see the beads on the edge, along the edge, and then the cat's paw, and then you can see the lace at the top, and this is going to be the edging, because it's going to, then when you finish this, you turned it, and you picked up the, along all along the edge here were yarn overs, and you picked up the yarn overs from the back and purled it, and then picked up all you know knit all the stitches that you picked up, and uh, and we're starting to go, starting to go this way, but this is what the bottom of it looks like. So pretty, super beautiful. Again, this is called Cat's Paw Lace Edge with Cat's Paw Insert. And these are all going to be Shetland Lace samples and um, Shetland Lace designs. And Shetland Lace is one of my favorites. If you want to knit this with us, um, this again is Tony Lorenz. I'll put a link to the pattern and Ravelry down below. You can buy the pattern and knit this along with me. There's about 100 people, I think, knitting this in Ravelry. And uh, really beautiful scarves and shawls already starting to show up there. And that's my second year-long project. And again, I may do that other shawl. I haven't decided yet. I mean, put the yarn pulled aside and everything. But then uh, next month, I'll show you next clue when we get it. Um, you do need to be able to read a chart. This is what the pattern looks like. This is it. But you can also write it out. If you are not familiar with a chart, you can always take a chart. And write it out stitch by stitch if you're more if it's easier for you to do the written text and that's a good way for you to learn how to do how to knit charts as well so that's the next project I've started working on uh, so I've done I did my test knit I did those two projects and I picked the yarn for the third year-long project and then the other project I've been working on since Christmas is a, a project I shared uh, during December. Uh, this is by Stephen West, and he started his Hybrid Knit Along 2, the second annual Hybrid Knit Along, and he has two different types of shawls for the Hybrid Knit Along, plus a sweater and a blanket and a hat, all kinds of projects in those, his project book. This one, Hybrid Knit Along 2, and I decided I wanted to do the circular shawl, which is this one here. This is the cabled trellis shawl, and that's what it looks like. Um, I bought a kit from his store, Stephen and Penelope in Amsterdam, and it consisted of three skeins of um, the Spin Cycle or the Spin Cycle Dream State yarn, and the colors I had were these three here. I had a purple and then uh, kind of a maroony purple and then the last one is a darker wine color with some black so those are my three colors that's all I have left of the purple one um, I'm on the second color and you basically just knit the colors until you're done with them and then you move to the next color and then my main color is this um, West Wool West wool 
from Amsterdam. And this is a tandem a yarn, a DK weight, 100% wool yarn. And my colors in this grayish of it. It's a dark or a medium gray wool yarn. I have two skeins of that. And um, this is being knit since this is a worsted weight yarn and the, the wool, the main color is DK. I'm knitting this with a US 7 knitting needle. And this is how far I've gotten so far. I just started it a couple of days ago and it's knitting really quickly. I've gone through the first skein, as you can see, was the, which is the purple. And then, you know, you can see where it started out center here. You did a, an I cord cast on right here. Very simple. I'll show you uh, some of that. I did do a little bit of video while I was starting it. The I cord edging. Um, and then you can see how the I cord carries along the edge for the whole shawl, which is really nice. It makes a nice finished look. Um, so we did the I cord garter stitch knitting back and forth, and then it started with the second color. And you can see how this is actually cabled. You might not be able to see it back here, but once you get it up close, these are just some simple cables. There's two types of cable. There's a a C4 back and a C4 front cable and I have some video on that I'll be showing you at the end of this video but there's that cable and then eventually it starts getting into more of the kind of like the slip stravaganza where the cables start expanding and crossing and making beautiful diamonds and this is what it's looking like sorry it is curling a little bit because you know just the way it's kind of a little bit stockinette where you purl the back and knit the front. Um, but it, that'll block out. And then you can see this was my purple yarn. It went purple and then it had some blues in there. Really pretty. And then it went more to bright purple and then with the dark purple. And now I'm on the second skein, which is the reddish purple. Kind of some orange in there. And uh, you knit the, all the second skein, and then you start with a third skein. And again, it looks something like this, but I have a different color skein than that. And then I think the ending's really cool. It looks like a, a little bit like a picot, but it's not. And this is very simple knitting. If you're interested in making this, you can pick up the pattern. You don't have to do the whole book, but there you can get by the ebook. Or you can buy the pattern in Ravelry. I'll link that down below. But it's going to make a really nice big shawl. Because again, I'm only like one third of the way done. And you can see how nice and big this already is. And this isn't even blocked. So this is going to make a really nice, beautiful, big shawl. Sorry, I got yarn stretched everywhere. One on one end, one on the other end. And um, But that's what it's looking like so far. And it's, like I said, this is such an easy, easy knit. You could do this while you're watching TV or other movies. And it's very, very relaxing, very easy to do. Um, and it's uh, mosaic knitting. The color work is uh, one color per row. So um, you are not ever um, having to do the floats and stuff. And you can see the back, how the floats look neat. For the most part, um, they look pretty neat. And of course, I try to make leave them a little bit loose because I want to. I'm going to be blocking this out a little bit, but you can see it looks really nice and neat. Super easy knitting. So, if you want to pick that up, that is uh, the cabled trellis shawl. There's also a triangular version that's part of Hybrid Knit Along too. Um, well, all of this is Hybrid Knit Along too. Um, I decided to go with a circular that reminded me more of slip stravaganza. Even though I want to knit another slip stravaganza, um, here is the spiraling cable. Cable's triangular shawl. That's what that looks like. So that's the other version of it. And I know that Sabrina Melodius has knitted this. You should go check out her channel. I'll put a link to her channel down below. She has knitted this and this, the, the circle, the one I'm working on. So go check out her version of it. She did not get the kit, but she pulled yarn from her stash and really beautiful. So please go check out Sabrina's scarves and shawls. But she knitted this one as well, which I think the lines on this is really beautiful. It kind of looks like the Curio socks from Andrea Maori as well. Really pretty. But I like the way that the lines work on that with the uh, colored yarn. Um, i am also been uh, working on uh, getting some, my um, self together for... I told you guys I was going to be working on some uh, um, 
tops and stuff. I'm going to be starting some socks and some sweaters soon. I'll be sharing that with you guys. Um, and, um, Easiest to use the TPNs when creating an I cord or doing the I cord cast on instead of transferring the stitches back to the needle that you just used to knit. All you have to do is slide it down and knit again. It's just one of my tricks I love to do when I'm doing an I cord or an I cord cast on, as I'm doing for the cable trellis shawl. This is a short I cord. This isn't. Sometimes with Mr. West shawl, you have a long I cord, like 40 stitches long. This one's a short one, and this one's a thick I cord because this yarn is worsted weight. But you can still see the I cord. And next, I would just slide it down to the other end and knit again. But I think that's all I have to do, and just I have to turn and pick up stitches now. One stitch, raise the bar in between, you go from front to back, you have to knit the back loop. Then there's a cable stitch. This is the cable for back, you can take two, put it on a cable needle, take it to the back. Knit the two stitches, next two stitches on your needle, and then knit the two stitches on your cable needle. go from back to front, you knit through the front. You take a cable so just to the back, it's a right leaning cable. Go to the front, you know. If you want to do a left leaning cable, you take your needles to the front, knit through these, and then knit through the stitches on your label, that, like this. You can see how that's a left leaning cable now. That's a right leaning cable and a left leaning cable. Now,
Now you guys know the routine. Uh, now that I've shared what I've been knitting, I really haven't gotten any um, pictures sent to me in a while because December was a little bit different in January. I took off. So um, this is where I invite you guys if you guys have some projects you want to share with us and you want me to share them here in my video, please email me um, those projects. You can find my email address in my about section. And um, we would love to see what you guys are currently working on, what you guys are currently making. And I invite you guys to also share down in the comment section below what you guys are currently working on. Uh, I love to hear this. This is why I do these videos. It's because I would like to know what you guys have been doing. Been so MIA, I really just haven't been feeling very well and took a little bit of a break. And uh, have just a, had a little bit of a hard time getting myself back into filming. But hopefully I'll be back and I apologize to you and um, uh, I hope you're all doing well. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with me today. It is lovely to see you all again and spend some time with you. Anyway, hope you're doing well and I will see you all very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.